In this video, we're going to take this shiny red Audiobahn 1000 watt amplifier that's currently available for $80 on Amazon and find out, can it power this massive Audio 6000 watt subwoofer? Let's find out. sure many of you recall the name Audiobon in car audio from the early to mid 2000s with the flame series amplifiers also the ones at rack mount and of course the flame series subwoofers as well Audiobon started back in 1997 currently their home office is in mexico and some of you guys may recall back in 2019 there was a big deal to do with a drug bust with alpha sonic and Audiobon. 1.7 tons of meth was found in containers. Yes, that's messed up. This is not a Mickey Mouse program. Now I have to thank my friend Mo in Canada for letting me know about this amp, $79 audio bond that we found on Amazon. Check a link in the video description. There's only a few available after I purchased this, but I went to the website, audiobond.com.mx. Obviously Mexican site. You can switch it to English, which is what I did. You can see there's several different amplifiers here. And the one we're looking at, there's actually two different versions. They're $24.99 pesos, $150. It comes in blue and red. Unfortunately, Amazon only had the red color. So let's take a look at it. Here's the box. You can see there's a whole lot of text information going on on the box. They call it Audio Bond Prime. Not sure what's up with that, but the model number also is the Murdered Out Series, the Murder 1DRD. The RD stands for red. So let's open it up and take a look. You can see the manual here. Starts off in Spanish, but there's also an English version uh, about halfway through. Now we'll take everything out so we can find out what all is included with this amplifier. But before we do that, the first thing in the box is a white glove. That's right. They must have sent it from Michael Jackson back in the day. Everybody needs a white glove with a red amplifier. Also in the box, we have this cable for the remote bass knob. It does have the phone style RJ11 style connectors on the end. And here's the base knob, just says audio bond. It is metal, but it doesn't have any lights or anything other than a potentiometer to say minimum or maximum. So really basic, but again, this amplifier at $80 US, super cheap. We don't expect anything super fancy and we didn't get it. Also, there's a little baggie here, has the high level inputs, has some extra fuses mounting screws as well as Allen's keys. Once again, Allen's gonna run out eventually if he keeps sending us his keys. Here's the outside of the amp. It looks pretty good. This red is really shiny. Again, murder-1DRD. Not sure what's up with that. <laughs> Here on one end of the amp, it does have protectors for the RCA. So we'll go ahead and make sure we get those removed before we talk about all the different features. They're just little caps. I guess it keeps things from falling into the RCA jacks. But here on this one end, we have a high level input on the far left. We have RCA inputs, they're standard, not the Tiffany style. Gain control, 0.25 volts to 6 volts. Subsonic, 10 hertz up to 50 hertz. Bass boost is centered at 45 hertz and is variable from 0 to 12 dB. Low pass filter, 250 hertz down to 35 hertz. Obviously, with this shiny red exterior, the white glove that's included is to keep your fingerprints from getting all over this after you eat your french fries. So here on the opposite end, we do have a single speaker output for around 8 gauge. You also have a power and protect LED. We have 4 gauge for power and ground and an 8 gauge remote because you need 8 gauge for remote, you know. Here's everything included. Make sure you take that silica gel packet and throw it in your toolbox. Helps keep your tools from rusting. And the amp you can see here, relatively small, relatively compact as far as dimensions go. It is two inches for the height, five inches for the width, and 9.5 inches for the length. Although the box and the amplifier itself say 2400 watt max, it is rated RMS, four ohms, 400 watts, two ohms, 680, one ohm, 1000 watts. Now, if you want to see the internals, you have to stick around until after the amp dyno test, but we will show that. Speaking of amp dyno tests, let's fire up the SMD Demore Engineering Amplifier Dyno. Check the power output. On the left, RMS power output in watts. In the middle, the ohm load. On the right, the voltage of the dyno. We'll also have the remote clamp indicator so we can calculate efficiency. This here's my favorite part. 
First up, we'll test at four ohms. It's rated 400 watts. We do have some graphics here to show you. A two ohm dual voice coil subwoofer wired in series will give you four ohms. Also, two four ohm dual voice coil subwoofers wired in series parallel will also give you a four ohm load. So let's find out certified first. We got 371 at 14.6, but a little bit shy of the 400 watts it's rated. So let's reset it up here for the uncertified test, which takes us to the clipping point of the amplifier. And yeah, we're pretty much right at that 400 watts. 393, statistically, that is 400 watts. That's like less than 1% difference. Now, dynamically, the amplifier was close again to 400, but not quite there. 394 at 14.63, 396 there at the end. Let's uh, check the efficiency, 73%, which is not great, honestly, at four ohms for a class D amp. Two ohms is rated 680 watts. Now to get a two ohm load, you need a single four ohm dual voice coil subwoofer wired in parallel, or two two ohm dual voice coil subwoofers wired in series parallel. That will give you a two ohm load. Certified run first to 1% distortion, 619 is rated 680, so that's a little bit shy. But since this is a cheap amp and a monoblock amp, we're looking for the uncertified results here. And you can see pretty dang close again. 673, where it's rated 680. We'll call that a pass. What about the dynamic burst test? Can we get over that 680? Yes, we do. It jumped up there, but of course we are using the lithium bank, so we're 14 and a half volts, but 729. Efficiency we measured exactly the same, 73% at two ohms. Next up is a one ohm test. This is where it's rated 1000 watts. We'll try the certified test first at 40 hertz. See what we get, 858 at 14.34. So a little shy there as far as percentage goes, quite a bit off. But let's try uncertified again. This is what we're going for for the clipping test here to find out can it really do a thousand. Look at this, right at a thousand at 14.22. Now let's reset it up for dynamic test. See if we can beat that thousand watts. And yes, we can easily. Over 1100 watts. There you go, 1200 watts. 1213 at 14.45. And we'll check the efficiency at drop quite a bit, 60% at one ohm. Here's a graphic of all the results that we just showed you. And a couple things to note here. Efficiency was a little bit lower than I like to see, but the rated power and the clipping output was so close, we'll give this amplifier a pass. Now, if you wanna see lower than one ohm, you gotta stick around to the very end of the video and we will show some super low ohm tests. Now let's try it with the Massive Audio 6000 watt sub. You can see here this cheap amp is pushing this subwoofer, it's flexing quite well. Now you are hearing some rattling, unfortunately that is stuff around my lab. My apologies for that. Now let's try this woofer test and see how it works with multiple different low frequencies. The big thing to note here is this sub is wired to half an ohm and this amp ran at 30 minutes with doing these tests and also some music tests with no problems. So let's find out what's inside. Before we do that, let's take a look at the outside after we did the speaker test. And this is one of the hotter amplifiers I've seen on the outside. 111 degrees Fahrenheit on the outside was pretty dang hot. But also when we flipped it over, you can see that that choke was over 200 hundred degrees Fahrenheit and I have not seen the amplifier get quite this hot. It's getting hot in here. Using Michael Jackson's white glove we'll flip over this red amplifier and check out the internals. Here you go. Compact amplifier. 
capacitors, transformers, a whole bunch of stuff here. You can see the 340 amp fuses are actually on the bottom, as well as 25 volt, 2200 microfarad input filtering, 4700 microfarad, and 63 volts for the rails. See a couple of vertical boards there. One is for the crossover, the other one is a driver board. But yeah, there's the amp overall. Now, what we did notice, and again, a buddy Mo pointed this out the Black Diamond DIA K1X and this amp look virtually identical as far as the internals go. I would note the Black Diamond probably has a better warranty, also looks cooler in my opinion. Now, let's talk about the pros and cons of this Audiobond Red Monoblock Amplifier. It is inexpensive, small footprint. The bass knob is included, even though it doesn't have any additional features. It is included. has a variable subsonic, which is nice for an amplifier at this cost. It did rated power at clipping or right at rated power. Now, is it low ohm stable? You have to stick around to the end of the video to find out. Things to consider, the amp got really hot during testing. has a single speaker output. The bass remote is very basic, but again, at least it comes with one. Standard RCA is no Tiffany. Warranty, we're not really sure. After 30 days, you're kind of stuck with it on Amazon. I'm not sure how they handle the warranty through Mexico. And is it worth going cheap? We've talked about this before. You know, you spend less money, but hey, you have to understand there are some drawbacks. You know, maybe the warranty, also the quality. We're not really sure how good this thing will last over a long period. But man, for 80 bucks and get some bump in your car, this thing ran half an ohm on the subwoofer for like 30 minutes with no problem, even though it got super hot. I thought it was pretty cool overall. So thank you guys as always for watching. This is Big D. Until next time, I'm out of here. Big Dummy back with some extended testing, including 0.8 ohms mono. Let's try it out certified on the dyno. We got 924 watts at 14.32. Let's reset the dyno and try dynamic at 0.8. Over 1200 watts. Ooh, it jumped to 14. 1403 watts at 14.41. Let's go even lower. 0.67 mono. Of course, it's not rated. Only big dummies do stuff like this. Certified test first, 1% distortion. 952 watts. 14.25, it's amazing it actually even ran that certified test. Dynamic burst at 0.67, over 1400 watts, nice. What about half an ohm though? Is the big dummy crazy enough to do this? We're just gonna run the dynamic test, not the certified test, just to see. This is a fun test to see what kind of big numbers we can get. At 40 hertz, 1651 watts, ooh, 1659.